Jeremiah chapter 7. Again, we're dealing with a nation, Judah, is just completely rebelling against God. And God has sent prophets, God has sent Jeremiah, and they're not listening. And we're coming to the end of Judah and Jerusalem attacked by the Babylonian army. But we're in the period of the church age. We're coming to the time of the rapture. And the church is involved in sin. And God has sent the King James Bible. And God has sent men. Many who are not pastors. Some are pastors. Evangelists and preachers and teachers. And they're not listening. And America. Coming to the time that, that the rapture is going to happen in the church and then seven years of tribulation period of Antichrist, America is involved in her sins. She may be destroyed, will be destroyed, because you won't find America in the eternal life. And God has sent preachers and teachers and, and evangelists, and she's not listening. Jeremiah is a current event book for 2021. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. That's inspiration. Yeah, Jeremiah wrote the word of God. Yeah, people, men wrote the Bible by the inspiration, by the Holy Spirit of God. That's the difference between the Bible and and other religious books, the inspiration of the God, the God, the Almighty God, and the Holy Spirit, spoke, narrated man to pen the words of God. And I said, man is the pen, and the ink is the Holy Spirit. That's inspiration. 100% fulfillment of the prophecies of God. Listen, the Latter-day Saints, no prophecy. Matter of fact, you can't even find archaeology to people. The Missal, the Catholic Missal, no prophecy. The Koran, no prophecy. The Watchtower, no prophecy. The Bible. Prophecy fulfilled. And prophecy that will be fulfilled. Any prophecy that's in the Bible that has not been fulfilled yet. It's not that the Bible is a liar. It's prophecy that will be fulfilled one day. Jonah said of the word of God, Nineveh shall be destroyed. Nineveh repented and got right and got God's favor. And later on, Nineveh was destroyed. So the word that came to Jeremiah the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, not Jerusalem, at the gate of the temple, where all would come in. Where everybody will see you, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is going to be, in a moment, a street preacher. And yes, he will turn people away. And when they say, when, they, when, I, when I preach on the street, they're turning people away. Absolutely correct, and that happens in the Bible. You're going to find nobody gets right when Jeremiah Street preaches. And he's at the he's at the, the temple. He's at the main stay of the Jewish people and God at their assembly building. Where God meets with the Jews. And God told Jeremiah, you go to the gate of that city. Don't you go inside. You go in the gate of that city and you preach to those people what I tell you to preach. Does that, rec that, does that recognize to you something that's in the Bible? 
Revelation chapter 3, Jesus Christ himself is standing at the door, not in the church. He's standing at the door of the church knocking. Jeremiah and Jesus are at the same location. In the Old Testament for the Jews, he's standing outside at the gate of the temple. And in the church age, Jesus Christ is standing at the closed door of the church. And both are coming to an end. In Revelation chapter 3, you don't ever hear the church after that to Revelation 19. Stand the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there the word. Street preaching. And say, hear the word of the Lord, O ye Judah, that enter at these gates to worship the Lord. They are going to the temple to worship the Lord. And we have been involved many times in our ministry. We have been outside, I call it the compound of Jehovah Witnesses. We have been outside the Catholic Church. You say, how dare you do that? How dare you go outside these religious places and, and do what you do? Jeremiah did it. There are people going into their buildings, going to their places of worship, thinking they're going to God, and God told me, you stand there, you hold this line, you preach. Just like Jeremiah. You go inside that church I'll send you to go to, you tell them what the Bible said, and they disrespect it, they'll throw you out, they'll get you out, you'll have to leave. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Your God better be the God of Israel. It better not be the God of Islam. It better not be the God of America. Amend your ways. Fix up your ways. Get your ways correct. And your doing. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. You get right. You repent. All right, everything be well. I won't destroy this temple, God said. And that temple will be destroyed. By the time we close the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations and Ezekiel, that temple will be destroyed. Ezra and Nehemiah. I, I, I said recently, and would it be quite interesting, quite funny to learn that after the rapture, when we come to the period where the Antichrist said, all right, I've died, I've come back to life, make an image, give that image life, and that image says, receive the mark on your forehead or on your hand. I said, would it be funny if the Antichrist puts a documentation, recommendation, anybody who wants to receive the mark, head down to your local Baptist church building. Plenty of parking. That'd be funny. Wouldn't it be funny if the grand of our churches, Baptist churches today, if the Antichrist used what? I mean, you, some probably maybe think the building's going to go up in the rapture. They're not going to go up in the rapture. Your Baptist church should still be here, and they'll be at use for the Antichrist. Wouldn't it be interesting? Your beautiful mannequin, manicured lawns, and your great buildings, your great painting, your great carpet, your great pew, your great altars, and all that. And the Antichrist says, sign up at the local Baptist church building to receive your mark. Hey, things ain't going to go that bad. Listen, the, the, the devil, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Satan's in the pulpit allowed to see in churches today. It ain't going to be too far for the Antichrist to go into church buildings today. He, most of them, he's already there now. Jeremiah is at the temple. And you know what a lot of Baptists think today? I don't care about the other religion. I'm talking about the Baptists. You know what a lot of Baptists think? Their church building is the temple. Their church building is where God will be with you. Baptist Catholic. There's no other church but our church. And then the, the, the Baptist, there's no other church building but our church building. I'm telling you. Trust ye not in lying words. Oh. And there's false prophets running around. And there's the Jews running around saying, hey, don't listen to Jeremiah. Don't listen to God. We know. 
And there are, in the pulpit today, there are liars. There are deceivers. There are wolves in sheep clothing. There are preachers and pastors and Sunday school teachers that are lying to the people. They're deceiving. And there are, are people running around in America through the government, through the media, lying to the people. And there throughout the world, there are people running around lying to the people. That's the mark of the fatherhood of Satan, John 8, 44. He is the liar and the father of lies. So when you've got a liar in the pulpit, that is Satan in that pulpit. And I don't care if it's a little white lie, a little treasured lie, a little lie to, you know, to get important. It's just a pastoral story. If it's a lie, it's a lie, and the devil is the father of lies. Trust ye not in lying words. Saying, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. The house of God. The house of God. Go to church. Come to our church. See our church. Look at our great building. You know, it's so funny because it, it did happen to me. I heard, I think it was Dr. Ruckman say, when he gets invited out to these churches and it's a brand new church that he's never been to before. And the first thing, you know, they guys say, well, you got to bring you to the church. but We got to show you the church building. And when I remember I came down here for the first time to Florida. And we were brought down here by a church. And we came in here. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. And we've been through all the planes and all that. And we arrived 2 o'clock in the morning. Guess what that pastor said? 2 o'clock in the morning. We got to go see the church building. See the church building. See the house of God. That's what they're crying today about their places of assembly. I mean, we had one time, we had a great time. We used to meet out in the gazebo in the, in, in the park. You meet there. Yeah, it was quite neat. Quite interesting. Didn't need to pay for air conditioning. For if you truly Amend, there's that amend again, your ways. If you completely, if you return, if you repent, you put away your sin, you do what God is telling you to do. <coughs> Pardon my voice. And your doings. Doings verb. That's a verb. What you are doing. What the nation of Israel is doing is wrong. What the church is doing is wrong. What America is doing is wrong. What the world is doing is wrong. And God says, get right. Repent. I've had Christians tell me, uh, I, I don't like that turn or burn. What else is there? If they don't turn now, the city will burn. And it does. And if they don't repent and get right at the preaching of Jeremiah, they will die and go to hell. And there are Jews from Judah and Jerusalem in hell today. God's people, Old Testament, they're in hell today because they did not repent. And when a Christian comes up to me and says, I don't like the, 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 the turn or burn. And yet the Bible tells me that Jesus said about a about the man in hell, he's like, will you go home and tell my family, turn or burn? Will you go to my family and tell them about this place? Will you tell them not to come? And Christians today, I don't like that hellfire preaching. We got to have more love. I got to let my light burn. And they don't tell anybody about hell. And they don't witness. If you throw an execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, well, evidently, in Judah, the law was not being practiced correctly, like it is in America and the world. And in the churches. Churches are not properly judging
if you oppress not, that means if you if you just you're hampering, you're degrading. You are exalting yourself over somebody else. And that happens in church houses. I've had my family and I, we, we, we've been ostracized, we've been made fun of. We, we, we were in a church one time, and it was out of the pulpit. <laughs> well, I heard this group of people, you know, they don't even want to park next to the Hayward's car because they have all the scripture in their car. I had a pastor in another church. Tell me, well, you know, you got to move that car because we got guests coming. We, we got a special thing in church. And our guests, and I, I, I said, I said, uh, you know, sarcastically, I said, if you want the car moved, you move it because we had a handicap biker and that was the handicap parking. I said, if you want the car moved, you move it yourself. And he said, give me the keys. I took my keys out and he took them and he had somebody move that car for us. You do that. You scream at the people. No, I preach at the people. You believe that doctrine you think we're wrong? Not the stranger. Oppress not the stranger. That's the Gentiles. And no, the Jews wouldn't do that. I mean, when God told Jonah go to the Ninevites, he just loved it. No. Peter was all in agreement to go to Cornelius. No. Even the woman at the well told Jesus, what are you doing talking to me? And that side fishing woman that came to Jesus, Jesus, I'm only for the I'm only here for my people, the Jews. I mean the people talk a prejudice and prejudice. There's a prejudice in the Bible. The Bible says the Christians that had no concord, no fellowship with the workers of darkness. The fatherless. The widow. We've seen that over and over. And shed not innocent blood. You mean they're killing people? Yes. In this page. Place. What place? Where is Jeremiah? He's at the temple. He's at the place of worship. He is at the only place in the world, in the time, that there is one place where God meets his people. Not the church age. That temple built by the Jews was to be that central worship of all the Jews to be there. And God said there's oppression, there's improper judgment, and there's murder going on at the place of worship. And even Jesus said, uh, I can't think of his name now, that was murdered at the, at the altar. I, forgive me for not knowing the monitor's name. There's people at the temple, at the worship, getting murdered. Then will I, God, cause you to dwell in this place. If you repent, if you get right, you turn. And the land of Israel that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. That's not going to happen to the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ gives them a new heart and gives them and, and, and removes their sin and forgives them their sin and never to remember their sins no more and they'll never sin again in the eternal life. But the temple and the cities and Judah will be destroyed because they did not repent. The church age will get worse and worse if that's a word unto the rapture. There's going to be no, there will be no national worldwide revivals. No, the church is too sour. You may have individuals in their heart revivals. I don't even believe you're going to have, you can have a church revival, a local church revival. Because in order to have a pure 
one church revival, local church, you got to clean all the leather out. Didn't we just read that? Then we just read amend your ways? You can't have unsaved people in your assembly because they're leavened. In order for a church to get right in a revival, the people in the assembly have to put away their sin. They have to get right. And not just for a week's preaching. You know, I've been in revival and things have gotten great for one week. And the next following Sunday, they were back to normal. That's the truth. Verse 8, Behold, ye trust in lying words. Israel is trusting in lying words. Peace, peace. The Bible says there is no peace. The church, they got deceivers. They got wolves in sheep clothing. They got perverted Bibles. They got false messages. They got messages that don't include what the Bible says. Lying word. The most abominable lie in the church is when you go to church and a woman gets up to that pulpit and teaches the congregation. That is surely lying word. I was going to say Joe is, that's, um, I can't think of her name now. Not Joe Osteen. Um, the other, that woman that's on the television, liar. When the Bible says a woman is not to usurp the authority, Joyce Myers. Liar. People listen to her. Liar. I've been in the church, they were lying to me, lying to me, lying to me. And everybody listened to it. And no one gave the preacher a hard time. Lies. Don't listen to him. Not only did they listen to him, behold, ye trust in lying words. It's our church. It's our pastor. It's got to be right. Check him out. I'm amazed in these churches how many people attend a church today and don't bring a Bible. I sat under a pastor, and he'd tell me things, and he wouldn't show me scripture. Liars and trusting in life that cannot profit. Will you steal? He's talking, he's talking to Judah. Are you going to steal? They're stealing. They were stealing, in the, we'll see in a moment, at the temple, but when Jesus came in and knocked all the tables over. They were swindling the people for the sacrifices that they need. You know they were swindling the people. The exchange of the, of the Roman coins to the temple coins and to the... And there's thefts going on in the churches. We were in a well-known well church with a no, well-known pastor... And people and women's women's purses were getting stolen. Somebody was going in the refrigerator stealing the lunches. In a well-known church with a well-known pastor's name, there was stealing going on. And that there were a couple times they were announcing for the women, watch your purses. And if if it's not your meal, keep your hands off. I'm not going to get named. Murder. There's that murder. Murder goes on in America. Stealing goes on in America in the world. And the Christians go, oh, you know, guns don't kill. Well, what was the bullets that killed them? Duh. And commit adultery. <laughs> that goes on in the churches. That's going on in Jeremiah's time. That goes on in the world. That goes on in your television. You go watch a television program, you pay for a movie, whatever. There is stealing, there's murder, and there's adultery. And swear falsely. There's your court. You swear to... I don't think they do the oath no more, I don't think. And burn incense onto Baal. That's the Catholic Church. You know, and there's nothing gross. And I, like I said, I grew up a Polish Roman Catholic. And there was nothing ever the grossest moment 
is when Catholic Church started. And you had that parade of the priests, I don't know what they call it, but they come and they're swinging that incense altar and that smell just makes you want to up chuck. And it took the whole service for that smell to finally vacate it. But that was just disgusting. But, you know, as they're walking up to their Baal altar, the sun got it. I know that don't happen in the Baptist churches. They don't, they don't, they don't burn their incense to Baal. No, they do it outside in the parking lot with cigarette butts. And this is a true story. This did not happen to me in my church. But I heard a well-known preacher tell me that a w another well-known well visiting preacher or evangelist went to this church. And what he did before he preached the message, he went out and picked up all the cigarette butts that was in the parking lot, in the grounds. And he used the collection plate, I think. And that, and the, but whatever, when he got into the church and ready, everybody to hear this, this, this man preach, he took the cigarette butts, whatever he put it in. And he dumped them on the communion table. And that caused such a ruckus. What? You ruined the communion table. What about the, 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 the incense to Baal? What about the waste of money? And then burning incense to Baal all over the world. In America. New Age. Religion. I burn incense in my house to make the house smell better. You get it? We got a dog and we, we get, it's humidity in Florida. You got to burn incense. Makes it smell better. I ain't burn it to a god. And walk after other gods whom ye not know. Now, what's that in the church house? There are Christians who walk in Esther. And they don't even know who Easter is. And their pastor is not going to tell them who Esther is. And they're not going to look up who Esther is or Easter. And when a man comes along and enters the congregation, joins the fellow, and tells them Esther and Easter are wrong, well, we like it. And when we read the other night, we're not going to listen. And when you celebrate the Christmas, the, the, the Tammuz Mass. You don't even know who Tammuz is. You don't even know what Christmas is. You don't even know what Valentine's is. You don't even realize that when you are honoring dead soldiers, that's honoring the dead. They're dead. Honor live soldiers. I was in a church. They had pictures of soldiers who passed off and died. Well, listen, they do that on Val I mean, they do that on Halloween in Mexico, in the Catholic Church, and their Inca religions. That's ought not to be named in the assembly of Jesus Christ. When did Jesus honor the dead? When did Paul honor the dead? You never seen Paul give one name of a saint who had passed on. Oh, we got to remember this person. No. There are gods in the churches today that claim to be Bible, claim to be Baptists, and the congregation doesn't even know who they are. I read a thing today, I mean a book about religions and all that, and how pizza, pizza, what's wrong with pizza? I love pizza, and they bring pizza to the fellowships and all that, and yet pizza is an Italian Roman dish that used to be brought by the Catholics to their churches and how that has crept into the Baptist churches. We're going to have a pizza meal at our church. We're going to have a youth ride right with pizza. You can't find something else. What happened to fried chicken? What happens? Of all things, you got to choose the Catholic thing. Yeah, you do. I'm just telling you, the devil knows how to sneak in. The devil's slick.
How do you sneak? How do you sneak face painting? We talked about the other night. And come and stand before me in this house. That's God opening up an invitation to the Jews that you get right, you repent, you turn from your stealing, you turn from your murder, you don't commit adultery, stop swearing falsely, stop burning incense to Baal, stop serving other gods, turn and repent and get right and amend your ways and turn to me and all will be well. There it is. And Jeremiah had no stanzas just as I am without one plea. And he doesn't have them sitting on pews. Where's the pews? Where's the organ? He's standing outside the gates of the, of the temple, preaching to them, telling the people as he preached, will you get right, will you, and you can get right, right there on the street. You can get right, right now in this gate. Then, 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 come and stand before this house. God says, get right first, amend your ways, then come to the temple. I preach on the street. I offer an invitation. I tell you right now, you can get right on Mongolia Avenue. That's where we're at in Daytona Beach. You can get right right now on Mongolia and Wall Street in Daytona Beach, Florida. You can get right with God. You can repent. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You may not reach Sunday morning church service. And I'm not inviting you to Sunday morning church service. I'm inviting you right now, here and now, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. And if you get right and you have repented, then I will do all I can do to help you find a King James Bible believing church to get in and grow. You're not right. You didn't get saved. You have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want you to go anywhere inside any church to ruin that church. Stay home on Sunday morning. Whoa. And those remarks right there had a preacher lie to me about, oh, we'll help you, we'll gain, we'll, we'll even get people to come out and all that. And when he realized what I preach and how I preach, that I don't preach churches on my street ministry. I preach the cross. I preach the resurrection. I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. God said, don't come to the temple till you get right. If you do, you're a hypocrite. The temple didn't make you right. And come and stand before me in this house. The temple. Not a church house. Which is called by my name. And it is. It's so funny. These Baptist church. Well this is the house of God. And not any of them have the name of Jesus on it. Do they? Then how can you say it's God's house? You don't even have his name on it. You have... Something Baptist Church. Pastor so and so. The pastor's name is on the on the signboard rather than the name of Jesus. Isn't that interesting? On many church signboards, I've seen the pastor's name and I haven't seen the name of Jesus. And I've seen a signboard, you know, we're having potluck. <laughs> Come for Good Friday service. All are welcome. And you don't see the name of God. And you know what a shame is? We went to Rowan one, one time. I got pictures. You, you can see. We passed a Catholic church. And, and I, I took the, I had to stop taking the picture because it's absolutely common. This Roman Catholic church said, Jesus Christ our Savior. That's the name of the church. I have never seen any Baptist church, and I could be wrong. I mean, go ahead, send it to me. Put it in the comments. You know a Baptist church called by Jesus Christ. You do it, put it in the comments. I want to see it in the comments. Put the, put the city and the state, if you like. If there's any Baptist churches out there, the Baptist church of Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ Baptist, if there, I want, I want to know. 
Because I can tell you right now, there's a Catholic church that has Jesus Christ as Savior. That's a shame. And there are Baptist churches, uh, Baptist temple. When Paul said that the temple is our bodies, not the building. And there's well-known preachers and well-known churches that had the temple. That's not the designation of our buildings. We don't even have designation for, for buildings. Our assembly, our foundation is house to house, not buildings. And again, I'm one of the people, I'm a house church person. We graduated from the Catholic Church, the Baptist Catholics, for these grand, massive buildings. You say, there's anything wrong with the building? Yeah, when the building has become more important than God. When more people show up for a work party than they show up for visitation. When the pastor thanks the people for mowing the lawn, but you don't thank them for coming out past on gospel church. Nothing wrong with that. Which is called by my name, say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Abominations. Theft is abomination. Murder is abomination. Adultery is abomination. Swearing falsely is abomination. Burning incense to Baal is an abomination. And after other gods, whom you don't even know. Again, if you don't know who Esther is, that's an abomination. If you don't know who Tammuz is, that's an abomination. If you don't know who Eros is, that's an abomination. And I'm not even talking about all the gods of America. And I'm not definitely talking about all the gods of the world. If I get to all the gods of the world, I mean India. <laughs> and I got a god a dozen for three cents in special sale, bringing a coupon, and we'll give you five more gods. I mean, if you're going to talk about gods and all, you talk about India. Hmm. Watch verse 11. In this house, the temple, where Jeremiah is preaching, which is called by my name. Why is it called by the name of God, Jehovah? Because in the Holy of Holies is where God is. It's become a, de a den of robbers in your eyes. Well, gee, who said that? Jesus Christ said that. Matthew 21, 13, Mark 11, 17, and Luke 19, 46. Them are the words of Jesus quoting from Jeremiah. Jesus quoted and backed Jeremiah preaching on the street. At the gate of the temple, and Jesus quotes from that. And you know, people come up to me in my street preaching and other street preachers, and you don't have a lick of sense what the Bible says. And you're going to stand at either judgment for the foolishness of your mouth, because Jesus said in Matthew, every idle word shall man give an account. Just be well, just shut up. Just shut up. When you got somebody street preaching, you got somebody coming door to door knocking on people, and you got a comment, and you don't know what the Bible says, just shut up. It's bad enough you're thinking it. For every idle word that a man shall give, you're going to give it a count. Just shut up. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. All right, see that capital L? See that capital O? Capital R? Capital D? God said, I seen it. Who said that? God said that to Jeremiah, yes. Who said it later on? Jesus said that. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. God said, I seen that temple called the robbers. And I seen it. I am capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jesus Christ in Matthew, Mark, Luke. And guess who Jesus Christ is? He is God. So tell the Jehovah Witnesses to shut up. There it is. I, God, have seen it. Who's that? That's Jesus. And not only did Jesus say, see it, but he said it.
Jehovah Witnesses, according to the scriptures, are liars. Because they will outright tell you, of all outrightness I've dealt with every Jehovah Witness, yes, Jesus is not God. And over and over and over, yes, the Bible says Jesus is God. There it is. But, go ye now in, into my place, which is a silo. And we got the imitation Shiloh in America for the great civil war. Why do we have a Shiloh in America? Because we tried to steal from Israel her promises. Replacement theology. You say, what's replacement theology? It doesn't belong to Israel no more. It's our, the Gentiles. And that's a heresy. That's damnation. And that's a curse upon the nation of Israel. And you're going to get a curse. The Catholic Church practices that. America practices that. She went into all the names and all the activities. I mean, in the great Massachusetts of the great Puritan, we're the, we're the great new city. We are the ones and not the Jews no more. And in the great religion of Utah, we're the great Gentile Jews of God. We've got the greats and all the places are... You know, Salt Lake City, Salt Lake, Salt Lake. You mean the Dead Sea? And they got the Mormon Temple. And they got a whole city dedicated to Mormons, where only Mormons can do their business. Does that sound like a Jewish city, land? The Mormons are stealing replacement theology. Taken from the Jews. And they add a New Testament twist to it that they are, you know, the official of the apostles. But they had no signs and wonders or anything like that. And that came out of America. Jehovah Witnesses came out of America. Mary Baker Eddy came out of America. The charismatic movement came out of America. And God bless America. <coughs> Not with her fruits. I set my name at first. Shiloh is where, before Jerusalem, where God was. In the tents. See what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. What, what? They went into captivity. They're gone. Vacant. Here is Jerusalem. Here is the actual building. You don't get right. You're going to be like Shiloh. Empty, vacant, dead. And now because you have done all these works. Steal, murder, commend adultery. Saith the Lord, and I speak unto you. Jeremiah, Isaiah. And every other prophet that God sent. I mean, what did I, what did I read here? That you he also had Zephaniah and Habakkuk. So there's others. Rising up early. That's a particular expression. Getting up early in the morning, preaching the word of God. And speaking. But ye heard not. There you go. I called you, and you answered not. They're not obeying. They're not listening. And they're going to get crunched. Therefore will I do unto this house. Which is called by my name. Wherein ye trust. Who are they trusting? The house. Not God. Does that sound familiar? Did not even the apostles or the disciples, did they not say, Jesus, don't you see the stones and the glory of how great this building is? See, Jesus, look, look how wonderful great this place is. Jesus then said, not too long it will be like that.
he'll be destroyed. 70 AD. They're trusting in the house. Not the God that's in the house. That's your churches today. There are Christians that trust in the house more they do to God. And I'm not talking about the church house. I'm talking about the House of Representatives. I'm talking about the Senate. I'm talking about the White House. The world's going to come to an end if we don't get a Republican in the White House. The world will end. Don't believe me? How many Christians got upset when Donald Trump did not win the Bradley election? Oh, they stole it. They stole. How about God and the devil got together and said, okay, whoever said it, whoever did it, Joe Biden goes in the White House. How about that? And how about, now whoever, God or the devil, I'm not sure. God had to get, you know, the devil has to get permission from God. God's got to get permission to the devil to do it. What, what about what the devil said to God, oh God, you know, they count the votes. Trump's going to win. And you and I both want Biden. You know? I, I'm just, and, and God's like, okay, let me just mess with the ballots. Or how about you, Satan? How about you mess with the ballots? Okay. Now how about God or the devil, or both, mess with the ballots to put Joe Biden in office if they wanted Joe Biden in office. I mean, do you really think your vote is going to override who God wants? That's a scary thing because, yes, it can happen. Because when the people wanted a pres uh, president, when the people wanted a king, God gave them Saul. And that guy made a habit. And then God gave him a king after his own heart, and he was neither Republican or Democrat. He was David. And David trusted the Lord, and the people trusted the Lord, and not the office. Not the palace. The people here are trusting the house. And unto the place which I gave to you, Jerusalem, and to your fathers, as I done to Shiloh, destroyed, gone. And I will, God, cast you out of my sight before we get to the end of Jeremiah. Sin is a serious business. And you know what one thing is not taught in major denominations today? Not just the Baptists. Major death. repentance is not being taught. There is no need in the churches and denominations of the preaching of repentance. God takes us all. God hates God hates the sin, but he loves the sinners. That's a damnable heresy that will get somebody going to hell thinking, I'm good and well. You might as well just get them to say a prayer. That's just as damning. And I will cast you out of my sight, and I will cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Ephraim joined the idols, Hosea said. Do you know a place in the world today they, they, they say they are of Ephraim? Those Mormons over there in Utah. They believe they come from Ephraim. And you open up the book of, uh, of Hosea and show Ephraim's torn to idols, let alone, and all the things about Ephraim. Then you walk away from them and say, hey, can't have anything to do with you. A whole book is dedicated to the sins of Ephraim. They were Joseph's son. But they'll get back because they end up part of 144,000. Dan, Dan's not mentioned. Maybe Ephraim is not mentioned. But there are, but Ephraim will get right because. Okay. Therefore, I watch, look at verse 16. Read verse 16 for a moment to yourself. Remember God speaking. 
And Jeremiah is about to go in a prayer closet. I pray when I preach. I pray before I preach. I pray while I'm preaching. I pray after I preach. We come home family Bible study. We pray before before Saturday morning. And we pray after Saturday morning. And I pray all week. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. God's been telling the people to Jeremiah, get right, get right, get right. Repent, repent, repent. Jeremiah, don't you pray for me. That is God speaking. Jeremiah, you're doing what, you, what I told you to do. I am giving you the message. They know what the message is. They've had enough. Don't pray for them. They're on their own. Jeremiah, you may not pray the, the proper prayer for them to get saved. And they saved is repenting and not being destroyed. What do you do with that when God told Jeremiah, don't pray for them? Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them. Verily, verily, don't pray for them, don't pray for them. Neither make intercession to me. And that's what Christians do. We make intercession for our family and for our loved ones. And God reached down to heaven to Jeremiah and said, don't even pray for me. How would you like to have that on a prayer, on a prayer even that many don't attend in churches, the prayer week? Midweek service. Imagine during the, the midweek service, there you are, and then God reached out, don't even pray for him. Erase that name. God would never do that. Yeah, somebody would say, God would never say that. God would never, what's the Bible say? Why don't you do that? Why don't you stop at a hundred Baptist churches throughout anywhere in the world, America, and say, would God ever tell you not to pray for somebody? And record down, yes or no. That's only, yes or no, that's all I want to know. Yes, are you saying yes or are you saying no? God would not, God would tell you not to pray for somebody. What would be the answer? What would be the poll? And what did God say? For I will not hear thee. Even if Jeremiah did pray, I ain't listening. And God wants them to get right. But he said, he said, I'm looking for it. I have called you, but you answered not. Verse 13. Don't bother praying for them, Jeremiah, because they're not answering, so I'm not going to answer. And brother, sister, when you get in that position with God, you are in deep trouble, saved or lost. When you or your loved one, God tells him, don't even pray for him. Stop it. I'm not listening. You're wasting your breath. You are in some serious trouble, and we'll stop there in that good word. <laughs> you better repent. You better get right. 